Hi guys, just some thoughts and a palm tree. There are no coincidences in life and every person comes into your life for a reason. So when I met Leslie, it led to her giving me a palm tree. We dropped in at her lovely home, me and my animal lover son, and he started playing with her dog at once. While my husband got busy digging the plant out, Leslie took me around her beautiful vegetable garden. Imagine her permaculture style garden was built all by herself. Compost bins, worm pits, self-reliant plants that seeded themselves, herbs, the works. Permaculture, as you may know, is all about gardening along with nature, sun, rain, wind, to feed all that your garden needs. And even in autumn, Leslie gets the greens for her salads and herbs for her pastas. Yummy! What impressed me about Leslie was her commitment to sustainability in her own way on her own terms. Growing her own food at home organically and without pesticides. She knows the principle of food chains and the importance of simple living and self-sufficiency. Precisely our values and mission at Swap to Green. I was curious to know Leslie's childhood growing up in a farm. I was a very keen vegetable gardener, so I grew up with him growing our own vegetables yep. and um, he was very good at it. Hmm. Um, I wasn't involved when I was a kid, but as I got older as an adult, yep. I realised how important Same it was. Same with me. The only thing I did was uh, watering yep. my garden yep. when I was like, but I started very young and I think it stays with you, Yeah. what your parents do. Yeah, I didn't even water the garden, I just stole the vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Like the peas and things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All kids like to do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I, I just, uh, yeah, I've been growing vegetables. I've had a garden right from when I was in my 20s. 20s. Yeah. Okay. And uh, every house that I've had, I've, hmm. I've built, hmm. I've, you know, probably about 12, 15 years ago, I started with the raised beds hmm. because it's much easier to get the good soil in there. Yep. And, um, why do you think um, raised beds are important? Well, it's it's um, you get uh, you can use a more friable soil in there. If you haven't got good soil, yes. if your soil is clay based, yeah. um, you can fill them up with something that's uh, a lot looser, more friable, and it's better for the vegetables. Also, um, what happens over time, as you can see in my vegetable gardens here, is is that that soil compacts down, and then you can add more good material to it. Mm -hmm. So I use all organic. Um, um, fertilizers like sheep pellets, blood and bone. Um, and That's what I love because organic gardening is the way to go. Yeah. Because at yeah. the moment we don't want to add more chemicals, more pesticides into our food. Oh, absolutely then, not. Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, and compost. So you can see. A compost bin provides essential nutrients for plant growth. In other words, organic fertilizer, leaves, grass clippings, kitchen waste, all go towards creating compost. Compost also improves soil structure so it can hold the right amount of moisture. Let's look at the compost first. So, yeah. There's the compost are, bin, guys. Yeah. I got stuck. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> are you in prison? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I make, um, what I do is I'll, I'll make compost in here as well. I use a black plastic bag. Yeah, and put stuff in that, and I just leave it. And the heat, the plastic just draws the heat in hmm. and makes it go off faster. Hmm. These are not so good. These ones, hmm. you're supposed to tumble them, but it's very wet mix. Okay, but I think I'm um, the humus, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's there. So basically, with yeah. this sort of stuff, I put it down in the garden bed, and then I might put a, a bag of bought compost or something over the top. Yeah, and this is just enriches the soil. Richest soil, yeah. yeah. I know, I know. I mean, I agree. I have a compost at home, compost bin at home, uh, where I put everything yeah. from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All these things. And this is the rhubarb, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. For those who don't know rhubarb, it's a fleshy edible stalk which are cooked and used for food. However, be careful as the leaves can be poisonous. Winter crops are mainly brassicas. Brassicas, so, yes. Yeah, cabbage, kale. Um, that's kind of like a broccolini over there. So every tiny year, one. <laughs> every year yeah. I try to grow two new vegetables. Two new vegetables, that's your goal yeah. every year. Yeah. Okay, cool. Or every season actually. Every season, yeah. Yeah, so just to try something different and yeah, yeah and I go, oh, I like that vegetable or I don't like that vegetable and yes. I won't grow it again. And unless we try these vegetables, we won't know that's exactly whether, 
you know we should and I, i mean in my channel i always encourage kids to eat everything yeah. unless you try you're not going to know that's right yep whether it's good for so this is the spinach yep. and lettuce different types of lettuce yeah Yeah, time at this time of the year for lettuce is not so great. Not so great, yeah. Um, yeah. And here is Rosie. <laughs> Hello, Rosie. And here is Teddy. And they like to eat the blood and bone. Blood. Right, and here's the worm farm. Worm composting. It always fascinated me and wanted one in my garden. So I bombarded Leslie with tons of questions. That's when I realized that she's also a very patient person. So what we see here is a worm farm. So that produces worm juice, which is very good for the um, for the garden, okay. for the plants. Okay. So I use worm juice, and I also use this um, seaweed solution. Seaweed solution, yes. Yeah. Sea salt. I use yeah. the same thing at home. Yeah. The plants love it. A worm composter is just a bin with holes for ventilation and moisture. The bin is raised off the ground to allow water to drain out. Okay. How do we make this? The, the worm farm? Yeah, yeah. How do we make this? Um, you can make your own out of any kind of container. Like okay. you could get one of those big plastic bins. Yeah. And you could drill a hole in it. You can buy these taps. Yes. Put that in there. And okay. you could basically, you could have them stacked up. So the idea is that this is the um, reservoir for the for the worm juice. Yeah. Which, this, this, is... Is, this is fairly new, so there's probably not much in there. Okay, okay. No, there's nothing. Oh, okay. So I can not... see a few. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it will fill up with um, liquid. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, so you put the liquid. So you can see I've drawn mm. some off into containers there. Okay, and um, yeah. So this so, is something I haven't started at home. Yeah. So you you can buy this this sort of thing. They're about a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars from Bunnings or okay. quite a ten. Okay. And basically, what you do is in the bottom you get some of that. Um, That coconut coir, you know, that you okay. get the um, and you mm. hydrate it with water, mm. so it's all nice and moist. Mm. And you put that in the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you um, you normally you buy your worms, or if you know somebody's got a worm farm, they can give you some, mm -hmm. and then they go on top of that, and then you feed them. So you don't feed them too much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, this is kind of kitchen scrapes would yeah, be fine. Okay. Yeah, they don't like tomato, mm. onion, or citrus. Oh, so they're choosy as well. Oh yes, <laughs> but they do, they do like human hair. Human hair. <laughs> yeah, and paper. Okay. okay. <laughs> and and the dust out of the vacuum cleaner. Really? <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> That's so, a good tip. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> pretty bizarre. <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's I'm so, pretty pleased with myself. That one over there. That's and did empty. did you do that on your own? Yes. Wow. <laughs> It's actually Kudos. Pretty, pretty Kudos. Easy. <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> Could you tell us a little more about your raised bed, please? Yeah, it looks so quite good. Yeah, yeah, you need probably about 30 centimeters deep mm -hmm. because if you're going to grow things like carrots or parsnips mm -hmm. or any of those root vegetables, they need the the room to grow and they mm -hmm. need um, the friable soil to grow in. If the soil's too hard, mm -hmm. they um, they won't grow. They'll go they'll go grow stumpy. Mm -hmm. So um, and also the if they're higher, it's easier on your back. bending over to weed or whatever absolutely so even um people with back problems or who aren't able to bend down yeah, you can see how knees. easy yeah. yeah see um how easy it is to do your gardening even yeah and you don't have to yeah. break your back i would say <laughs> and still do gardening and eat your own food Yeah. And that's uh, that's what we are all about, right? What we yeah. started doing in the last few years is using the pea straw as mulch. Mm -hmm. So that does two things: is in the summer it helps keep the soil moist underneath, mm -hmm. um, and also it breaks down and it enriches the soil because it's full of nitrogen. This here is a herb area, which can be easily planted in any garden. You can give it a funky effect by using planters in different shapes, like squares, triangles, and circles. Oh wow, I also found a lovely bay leaf tree here. Leslie had another surprise up her sleeve at the far end of the garden, a coop. The chickens were camera shy and hid behind the coop as I tried to video them. Can you call they're, them? They're quite young. <laughs> chickie. Chickie. <laughs> chickie. Chickies, come out chickies. <laughs> This was a brilliant move. 
Chickens are ideal livestock companions for permaculture. Their natural behavior, scratching, pecking, hunting bugs, eating, manuring, complements the permaculture system and adds up to a holistic approach to gardening. Most importantly, Leslie's garden represented the circle of nature. Trees bear fruit, so birds can feed on them. The waste goes back to the soil, gets composted and supplies nutrients to the trees. We return from Leslie's inspired and enlightened with ideas and tips and tricks on how I should start off on my own worm composting exercise. We'll get on to that soon and we'll keep you updated in future videos. Till then, see ya!